Glasgow's River Clyde. An international shipbuilding hub since the Industrial Revolution. Some of the most famous ships in the world were crafted here, including the Queen Mary and the QE2. Yet in the 1950s, ravaged by World War II and facing increasing competition, the Clyde shipyards needed to adapt. In 1968, with the help of a Labour government loan, five Glasgow shipyards amalgamated to form the Upper Clyde Shipbuilders Consortium. But within three years, the consortium ran into financial trouble. In June 1971, the UCS turned to the new Conservative government for a £6 million bailout to allow them to continue work on outstanding orders worth £87 million. But this was refused. I don't see any future for Upper Clyde shipbuilders as such. Uh, I made that clear today. With 6,000 jobs at stake and a liquidator in place, the trade unions decided to take action against the administration. Traditionally, this meant a strike, a protest, a riot. But a group of young trade union shop stewards decided to do something different. Led by Jimmy Reid and Jimmy Early, the UCS shop stewards took the running of the shipyards into their own hands. Rather than striking, they organised a work-in. We'll take the vote, brothers. For the shop stewards' recommendation, could we have a show of hands? Shout aye, brothers! Aye. They committed to keep the yards open without pay, finish all outstanding orders, and prove to the government that the yards were viable. Working people of Britain put an end to policies and practices whereby decisions can be taken by a group of men either in government or in a boardroom. The unions ran a well-organised campaign and Jimmy Reid insisted on discipline among the workers. And there will be no hooliganism, there will be no vandalism, there will be no bevying, because the world is watching us. The workers in the Upper Clyde shipyards uh, were very determined, and a lot of that was down to Jimmy's amazing powers of communication and leadership. The press and public were amazed by the audacious actions of the young shop stewards. There were marches to Downing Street, mass demonstrations in Glasgow, and a huge swelling of international sympathy and support for the Glasgow workers the recipients of the most colossal solidarity of workers throughout the length and breadth of Britain to sustain us in our fight because they know we've become something of a symbol. In 16 months, the work-in launched over a dozen ships. By February 1972, Edward Heath's Conservative government were forced to relent and an agreement was reached on the future of the yards. The UCS consortium was once again divided into separate shipyards with only one of the five yards forced to close. Jimmy Reid and the shipyard workers proved that injustices can be overturned with unity and sound argument that they weren't merely numbers on a page and could change the views of government. Although the Clyde Said shipyards suffered a decline throughout the late 20th century, the UCS work-in kept Glasgow shipbuilding alive, even 